Thank you, gentlemen. That game, solid win there for Gravity. You know, shoring up a lot of the weaknesses that we had pointed out in uh, after their previous matches here, specifically in their uh, in their shot calling and their initiative here in this one. I don't feel like they ever hit a point in the game where they were unsure of what to do next. Yeah, I really. Like looking at gravity now, as opposed to even last split, the shot calling difference is before they were always taking risks. They're always like, we should fight right now. And now gravity with move on the roster, they have so much vision. And it's more of a reserved shot calling that kind of resembles what Korean teams do at the higher level where they're warding up. They're making decisions based on all the information they have and the information they're denying from their opponents. And then they're like, OK, this is safe to do. That is safe to do. And it pretty, pretty much puts the opponent in a lose lose situation. And that's what gravity is doing on a smaller level. And I really like that from they need to go further with that. And also yeah. the Jarvan pickup for move was very interesting because it's somewhat unexpected. And when we talked about earlier in the day, the idea that a team could pinch junglers, well, when you have Jarvan in your back pocket, that becomes yep. a lot less useful of a strategy for Team Liquid. Exactly, that was the goal. As you said, we talked about it earlier in the day, maybe you give up rise because you pinch something else. And clearly they could not keep move down. Um, this was one game, but like the ganks worked. He did very well. He got a sight stone. Move to me was the MVP of this game. Everything happened because of him. Mid lane advantage because he blew the flash on Cassie P at like level three. Uh, all the counter ganks and wonderful things to get the rise in ahead. Like all bunch of wonderful things to say. And this is now like to me probably like the best at this time. Looks like the best mid season acquisition in the NALCS. Move has done so much now for Gravity. Um, and the fact that we now have Bunny Fufu taking over shot calling, he's learning really quickly. It's still a small sample size. Um, so you can't say for sure like just how good Bunny Fufu's shot calling is, but the fact is Move's getting his team ahead, and Bunny's leading this team to victory very well right now. You mentioned initiative earlier on as we were talking, and you know they actually went for inhib turret kills. We see so many teams will shy away from that and wait two barons and three dragons later for they actually crack the base, but Gravity's pushing in, taking a lot of advantages, and they're not shying away from fights that are very high percentage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this is coming from that supportive play style that you talk about here in Move. He didn't build a single damage item that game. It's simply Cinder Hulk into Sidestone into you know the fr tanky front line. And then on top of that, we saw every effort made to not take a kill. And that, I think, is kind of that next step, that little micro thing that they do here, which put Hanser so far ahead. You know, now we're on the topic of Hanser, Rise. We have to discuss it because... Do we? We do. <laughs> do we really have I'm, to talk? I'm declaring that we're going to discuss uh. it because Rise falls over to the red side here. And I think that's one of the more important things to note is that something that was initially looked at as a, a must ban for the red side team it falls into the hands of gravity here and pays off dividends. And it's really impressive as you watch this clip out, like Quas plays this about as well as possible. He actually body blocks as many cues as you know, humanly or treely possible here in this matchup and yet still, Okay, fine, I just won't kill the Vayne. I'll nope. just kill the tank and, anyway, who, like, what Spectre's And then the ulties can, back up. Yeah, and then Flash condemn. And then, yeah. yeah, exactly, as Irene just said, the fact that when you're passive procs, you can cool down your ulti so that it is up again by the time the first one runs out. Yep. It's yeah. just an incredible amount of damage. So And the, the root is a 600 range point and click, and most AD carries are below 600 range. I think there's only about yeah. four or five that actually go above that. Yeah. So Ryze just always has accessibility to AD carries. And I think he's just, he's absurdly powerful right now. And Jat was talking about him possibly being nerfed next patch. Honestly, I have no idea. Looking at PBE, I don't, I don't see, think any, it's in the I don't, I don't see anything coming out for him. I think for a there's while. plans for 512, but that's kind of what we're Hopefully looking at. Hopefully, right somebody comes out with the counter pick. We saw Huni play. Yeah, Huni played Shogat. Shogat. It. And I actually do like that. And the thing is, we're, we're it's funny because we're seeing Ryze kind of interact with the way we initially saw Top Lane Hecarim get interacted with. First Top Lane we saw in a long time that didn't run Flash. We're like, okay, yeah, range matches are good because it's hard for Hecarim to close the gap. And it was like, okay, if you gank him once early on, he gets behind and then he gets punished. And so you're like, all right, this team's going to first pick Rek'Sai. We're going to bait the Rise. We're going to punish it. He's fairly immobile. It's going to work. And then Move just like outplays every single gank. And, you know, maybe if Move weren't quite as good, that would have worked. And it would have been the genius plan where they baited the Rise pick and the Rek'Sai Malkai with all the lock was going to be wonderful. But the problem is it's such a snowball -y matchup, right? Mm -hmm. we've, I mean, we've even seen Hootie like go down three kills and still get one on one. So like... Um, as much as people seem to be baiting this pick, it looks like right now Rise is just simply too good to even play around. Yeah, on the flip side of the matchup, we look at Team Liquid, and it was mentioned prior to the start of the game, the idea that we don't want to read too much into their 3-0 start because they had a fairly easy schedule for their first three games. Yeah. They do drop this game to gravity. 
cause for concern or is it just we get behind a little bit early and we don't have the wave clear to deal with the incessant pushing that gravity now has? Yeah, no, I think it was, I think it's honestly, even though leading up to this game, Team Liquid's total opponents score line was one and like eight, right? Oh, three, oh, three, one, two, like, okay, that easy opponents. But no, I think Team Liquid is still a very good team. I think they're still uh, top four, maybe top five since gravity's so good right now. Uh, team of the North American LCS, they're certainly a playoff contender. Um, okay, don't give up the rise and then don't get out ganked. And maybe you look at, you know, a much better game. But move, like, put this game on his back. And that's what happens when you get an early game lead with Snowball Champions. Yeah, last season we saw some hiccups with Liquid every now and then where it's like, that champion select was really strange. Like, yeah. Peter, like, what is he doing for a second there? And now right. I think this is one of those things where it's like, Rise probably should have been a priority, but hindsight's always twenty twenty. Right, Team Liquid still looks like Team Liquid. One bad game, okay. Yep. But I think they're still solid. Gravity, obviously amazing. I think exactly that. Obviously solid. amazing. <laughs> obviously, if you <laughs> don't see it, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> no, the, here on the NLS, I'm making grand sweeping yes. accusations and big statements gravity are clearly amazing i yes yeah, sure great i do i do think that they put up a very good showing here and are making a case for themselves being in the top echelon of teams switching gears for just a minute gravity support and shot collar bunny fufu will be appearing in the newest edition of drive starting on tuesday fans can follow bunny as well as four other pros throughout the summer split as they strive to compete at the highest levels of lcs play here's an early look at drive I thought it was just gonna be some like random team news going on. The news was like crushing at the time. You don't really like realize what you had until it's gone, but I wanted it back and I wanted to do whatever it took to get back to that spot. My name is Michael Carrillo and some people know me as Bunny Fufu. Be sure to catch the first episode and follow Bunny's journey from the beginning this Tuesday over on lollysports.com. We're going to step away while the team set up for our next hotly anticipated match between rivals Counter Logic Gaming and Team Solo Mid. We'll be right back. Little Bunny Foo Foo. This is strong. Hop into my DMs. Is that a girl? Oh, it's the three girls. Where, where, where? The three girls, they have, a bunny, they have a bunny, look, hop into my DMs. It's Quas hitting him up right now. He gets over the wall. Now on the backside of the fight, Bunny, Fufu, and Move are in with Quas. Focus on the left side, focus on the left side. Nice. Nice, side, 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 and that means Piglet has to run for his life. The Desperate Power is out. He locks him up. He comes up with a double kill. Gravity take down Team Liquid to go three and one. 